This is the second part of the chopper rewinding process, in which you'll be given more details. If you haven't seen the first part of the chopper rewinding video, make sure to watch it, as it will help you understand better. So friends, the process starts here. When we make the first turn, it reaches this point. Then we rewind it again, and this becomes the second turn. Look at the third turn carefully. Also notice that it's going from the bottom to the top, and that's how you're supposed to do the winding. Now this is the fourth turn, then the fifth turn, and now the sixth turn. The first layer will have 23 turns. Now we'll count again and we've completed 23 turns. The continuity here is good and the continuity here is also perfectly fine. But we'll have to remove the wire because our starting point is at the bottom, so we have to reach the bottom again. We'll need to check where it needs to be. See, this whole part has been unwound. Now notice that we've removed one layer. Watch as we remove the second layer so we can reach the burnt out point. Now we're removing it and you'll see tape on top of it. We'll remove this tape. Notice this point starts here. We'll remove this wire and pull it out. Now we'll measure the size of this wire and we'll attach a wire of the same size. So this is the starting position of the second layer. Look, this is the very last position, which is why we will have to open the entire chopper. Now this is its end position, and we'll cut it here. Let's count the turns now. To measure the size, what you need to do is number the wire so that you don't forget the size, as it often gets mixed up and becomes confusing. So we'll give the first layer we removed the number one. Look, we've labeled it as number one. Now, we're removing the second layer, and you can see that its size is slightly different. Let's count its turns. There are seven turns, and then it continues reaching 15 turns. This was the second layer. We'll remove it now. Look, it's removed, and now we'll label it. Use masking tape to write the number so you can remember it's wire number two. Now, notice that since this is the nearby side, you'll also need to remove the low side to repair this side. To repair that side, you have to remove the low side as well. The side opposite this one has the same position as the others, all going in one direction. The third layer has 21 turns. After this comes the next layer, which is also on the low side, one on top and one on the bottom. All the turns are clockwise, so when you're unwinding, remember whether the turns are clockwise or counterclockwise. In our chopper, all the turns are clockwise. The last layer had 16 turns, so we've removed it. Now let's open the next one. This is the last one which is burnt out. Friends, look. The last layer has burnt out, so we'll remove it and count the turns. One more thing to keep in mind is that it should return to the center in the same position it was before. This way, you'll get the same voltage as before. So, there are 48 turns. Look, friends, it's completely clean now. Now, let me explain what to do next. Friends, after opening the chopper, the next step is to check what type of wire is used and what size of wire is installed. You might see some tools on the table for this purpose. Now you can use a wire gauge to measure the wire size. Additionally, you can use a vernier caliper or a screw gauge. A wire gauge is easily available in the market, and if you have a vernier caliper, you can use that as well. However, the best tool to use would be a screw gauge. You're probably familiar with the screw gauge, so get one and use it to measure the wire and determine the wire number. In this way, you can find out what gauge of wire is used and you can check its size in millimeters. Whenever you start the winding process, you should remember the sides. This one is the high side and this one is the low side. Our starting point is the second and third. 
and after that, the second and the first will be the end. We've put the insulation on, and now we'll start the winding. We'll begin with the first turn, winding anti-clockwise. Look, the first layer is complete. Now to cover it, we will either use masking tape or transparent tape. We'll cut it to size and apply it. Look, we've applied the transparent tape on top of it. Now we'll start on the low side. This is the second layer on the low side. Look, the third layer is also done. Now we'll start the fourth layer. Look, the fourth layer is complete. Now we'll apply the final layer, starting the last turn. The winding for the chopper is complete and the soldering is also done. Now we'll test it on the PCB. Look, this was taken out of the PCB, so we'll reinstall it and test it to see how it's working. Now look, the chopper is ready and we have installed it in the PCB. Now we'll supply electricity to it and you'll see how well it's working. Look, it's starting up very smoothly without any issues. Now we'll turn it on using the remote and the PCB is working perfectly. In this way, you too can rewind the chopper and renew the PCB. Now, we'll explain its calculations to you. However, all the steps we've explained to you must be followed carefully while you're rewinding. You should watch the video step by step and note everything to avoid any mistakes. So now, let's move on and show you the details. Now you can see some paperwork and a few items along with the chopper in front of you. Here's what you need to do as you follow along step by step when disassembling and working on it. On the chopper, I've written 1H where 1 refers to the first winding and H refers to the high side. Below that, the turns are written as 27 plus 20, meaning 27 turns were unwound from the top and 20 from the bottom. Similarly, I have marked everything this way and written it down for reference. What you need to do is note the specific number written on the chopper when winding. If you missed writing it during the process, that number is crucial because it's the identification number for the chopper. I've recorded this number for myself so that whenever I encounter a chopper with the same number again, I can rewind it easily using this record without needing to calculate everything again. When disassembling the chopper, make a diagram showing the first and second pins. When I unwound the first turn, I noticed it was wound clockwise. I've marked its entire position, where I started and where it ended at the first point. You must pay careful attention to where the winding starts and where it ends. After rewinding, record the resistance value, then note all the key points. Next, I measured the wire size with a micrometer to determine the exact thickness, and I've written down its size. When I carefully unwound the second layer, I realized it's a bit more complicated. If you forget to write things down, you won't remember what to do next. The second layer was from the high side, and the number was written there, along with the resistance value. The first turn had 17 turns, and there were no second turns. The wire size is noted here. Now look, this point is where we start. Starting from 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, the fourth number is where we begin, and the winding will go clockwise, ending at the fifth number. Now let's talk about the third layer, which is on the low side. I've noted down where it starts and where it ends, as well as its resistance value, the number of turns, and the wire size. After that comes the fourth layer. Look, it's exactly the same process. Then the fifth layer is the last layer. You've noted that it's on the high side, starting here in a clockwise direction and ending here. All of its specifications have been recorded for future reference. Now I've shown you everything you need to do. Next, I'll explain the final touch. After recording everything, you'll need to reverse it all. I'll explain how to do that. Look, the winding at the fifth number was the last, but when rewinding, it will go back to the first number. Also, whatever was clockwise will now become anti-clockwise, and the end will become the start, and the start will become the end. This means that everything you did while unwinding will be reversed. The second layer will now become the first, and the first will become the second. This will apply to all layers. The first layer will now be the fifth, moving to the top, and since the start was here, this will now be the end. The end will become the start, and anything that was clockwise will now be anti-clockwise, 
with the turns reversed as well. In this way, you will complete the chopper winding. I hope the information today was helpful and that you gained a lot from it. Click on the left or right thumbnail to watch our next videos and subscribe. Thank you.